When you type it into Google Translate, you get from the farthest from oblivion. Whoa. Better than food, man. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Clifford Lee Sargent. Great to see you as always. Get that coffee. This was a gift from Teresa, a very kind patron of the show, Out of the Dark by Patrick Modiano. Thanks very much, Teresa. Really appreciate it. Patrick Modiano is a French author who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2014. Uh, I found it interesting that this book was actually dedicated to Peter Handke, who won the Nobel Prize in Literature uh, last year, in 2019. Uh, he was the author of Short Letter, Long Farewell, which I reviewed a ways back. Um, their styles are not dissimilar, which is interesting, but I've only read one from each. This one from Modiano and Short Letter, Long Farewell from Hanke, which was excellent. I totally recommend Peter Hanke. He's, he's exceptional. And I think Vim Vendors did an adaptation called Alice in the Cities, which is, a, I, I think that's an adaptation of Hanke's novel, Short Letter, Long Farewell. And that's a great film. Um, if, you, if you like Jarmusch, if you like Paris, Texas by Vendors, you know, if you like any of the slow, meditative, like wandering uh, kind of traveler stories, like, it's awesome. You know, looking for interviews, you know, material for the review on YouTube, you're just so much better off if you speak multiple languages. I mean, really, I am, I am outrageously jealous. I need to learn French and Spanish and Portuguese and German. Uh, you know, you just have, because I can't, there are, there are like no interviews that I can find with English subtitles uh, on, on YouTube. If you speak French and English and Spanish, or Spanish and English even, just hats off to you. I'm extremely jealous. So Patrick Modiano, yes, is a French author from Boulogne Bilanco, I think, is how you pronounce it, near Paris. Probably butchering that, sorry. His father was Jewish, but didn't register as a Jew during the occupation of Paris and sold goods on the black market. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. His mother was a Flemish actress who worked for a German film production company out of Paris. And her family leaned right, which is interesting because how far right, I'm not sure. That's what it says in a New York Times article that I've linked to below. Though if they were Nazis or sympathizers, that would be very fascinating indeed. Because his father, who was Jewish, was associated with the Karlanga, the French Gestapo, in his black market business. They were like auxiliaries of the German Gestapo in France during the occupation. It's really interesting stuff, but it's like, man, that's dark. Modiano never got the full story from his dad uh, before he died. So I think that kind of uh, uh, stuck with him. And it seems, of course, this is the first novel of his that I've read, but it, I believe one of the running themes in his novels is a preoccupation with the past, uh, the secrets of the past. Uh, another interesting anecdote, uh, Raymond Cuneau, uh, who was the author associated with the Olipo movement, would help Modiano with his homework when he was young. Thought that was kind of cool. I've read that Modiano was a protege of Cuneau, but I'm not sure if that's true. So Out of the Dark, in its original French title, is De Plus Loin de l'Oubli, which means uh, directly translated um, from the furthest point of forgottenness. When you type it into Google Translate, you get from the farthest from oblivion. Whoa, it's like a metal album title, <laughs> you know. Beautiful as the title is in French, translating Modiano into English is probably not an easy task. So thank you very much, Jordan Stump, for this nice translation. It's a mystery and love story published in French in 1995 and in English in 1998. It's about a couple who travel from Paris to London together, separate, and then find each other again 15 years later. Our protagonist is this young guy who is uh, selling books, selling used books to get by in Paris, uh, living in a hotel. He meets a couple at a cafe, Gérard de Bevé, a guy who's trying to make money by gambling, and uh, more importantly, Jacqueline a girl who is always wearing a leather jacket that is too light for the weather, smoking and coughing and trying to quit her habit of huffing ether, which the kid actually partakes in at one point in the book. And uh, I don't think I've ever read a book uh, that described the pleasant sensations of huffing ether. So hats off to Modiano. I didn't know that was a thing in late 60s France. So this kid falls head over heels for her and starts doing things that one would only do if they were in love, madly in love, such as huffing ether and stealing a bunch of money from a man she appears to be sleeping with for money and running off with her to London as they gradually work their way to accomplishing their goal of getting to the Spanish island of Mallorca. Jacqueline knows a writer there who's going to take care of them or something. It's like these vague goals and, and ideals of uh, when, when you're young, you know. We don't really know what Jacqueline is doing with the other men because nothing is spelled out, everything is implied rather than stated. The vague way this kid and later man approaches life is fascinating because nothing seems to really make his heart race. 
Not crime, not poverty, only Jacqueline. He's like the character in Camus' The Stranger when he shoots the man. I mean, his pulse never really rises, you know, or, or at least if it does in the book, and I'm forgetting something, it, it doesn't seem to in memory. It's almost tranquil writing. It's like this meditative flow, very quiet. It's beautiful. It's beautiful writing. Uh, it's very, very economic. It's compact. It's, it's nice. It's elegant sentences, classy, if you want to call it that. It's written like a mystery, right? You know, so <laughs> the, one of the things I really enjoyed about the book was that at the end of each chapter, you know, the, la the last line, this, this declaration, uh, at the end of each chapter always just leaves you hanging. There, you're, it, 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 there's always some sort of suspense there, right? You, you want to know what happens next to varying degrees of drama, but still, you know, it's always like, and then, you know, so it really keeps you going. It really keeps the momentum of the story. This one you can read in the weekend. It's really, really short, super easy, uh, very enjoyable, a lot of bang for your buck. Um, if you're short on time, if you are super, super busy, and but you still want to read something meaningful and with a lot of uh, gravitas, you know, and just kind of a, a nice meditation on life, love, loneliness, and time, the aging process, the, the passing of time, then uh, I would totally get a hold of this one. This is pretty damn good. So yeah, they take off for London and they find themselves broke and living in a shitty hotel when they're introduced to a guy named Peter Rockman, who was a real guy, uh, a real slumlord in, the, in 1960s London, who appears to be sleeping with Jacqueline in exchange for money and letting them stay in one of his buildings. He's just this sad, creepy character who's kind of like a Weinstein kind of-esque um, profile. You see, Rockman was famous for his, um, what does it say? exploitation and intimidation of tenants, as it says on Wikipedia. Uh, he was an asshole. He was a bad guy. Also in London, the kid decides to become a writer, and that's what he does, and that's the career path he takes. It's mysterious in a way where nothing is resolved and things go dark, but never really dark. It's very readable. When I read the synopsis, you know, I expected this ultra-tragic, sad story about a relationship that was on and off for a period of years. This very torrid romance or something that emotionally eviscerates the reader. I don't know why, for some reason I had that impression. That's not at all what this book is. It's very understated, quiet, strange and reflective, concerned with the past and how it leads to where we end up, how we came to be, and how certain people in our lives stand out in memory more than others. The last part of the book takes place 15 years after they met uh, back in Paris. Jacqueline has changed her name and appears not to recognize our character. And the way he meets with her is crazy. He just like recognizes her on the street one day. You know, this is 15 years since they've last uh, seen each other. And uh, uh, he recognizes, I think like her walk or something. He spies where she's living at, I think the building. And then he somehow manages to get into this party that is uh, being held in the same, bu in the same building. The, the way in which he infiltrates this, this place and begins interacting with these people and then finally gets to her is just fascinating. I don't know, it's, it's simple, but I, I don't know. Modiano has a way of making the simple, um, engaging and very enjoyable to read. Suspenseful mystery quality. It's like, are they going to get what they want? Are they going to get to the place where they need to be. Um, is everything gonna work out? Is she gonna recognize him? It also touches on, you know, our desire to be recognized, our desire to be remembered. You wonder in 15 or 20 years when maybe you and, and somebody who was once important to you are um, much older and maybe even barely recognizable to each other, would they recognize you? You know, would they remember you? It's a good question to ask. And his awkward attempts at uh, jolting her memory through conversation have a strange kind of excitement. You know, will she remember him? After all, that's what we all want, to be memorable. The characters, the situations, all these things are obscure. And really, a lot of it is undefined. It seems to me, thinking about it, that we only get the vaguest outlines of the narrative. What we're given is easy to follow and in a linear fashion. But as far as everything the characters are thinking, much of that is left to interpretation, especially for Jacqueline. We, we really don't know what is going on in, in her head, um, ever. Her, her character remains impenetrable, which makes for a pleasant, mysterious read.
We think we might know people, but we don't. Not really. We don't even know ourselves. What's most interesting to me about the story is that Jacqueline stayed in this character's head for 15, for 15 years. More than all the other stories and characters that happened in that time period. And that's a lot of life, a lot of time, and a lot of characters, a lot of relationships. You know, 15 years is not uh, an insignificant amount of time. But he says perhaps she stayed in his memory because um, their story was unfinished. And then the next 15 years fell apart. A few blurry faces, a few vague memories, ashes. I felt no sadness about this. On the contrary, I was relieved in a way. I would start again from zero. Of that whole grim succession of days, the only ones that still stood out were from when I knew Jacqueline and Van Bevet. Why that episode rather than another? Maybe because it had remained unfinished. The bench I was sitting on was in the shade now. I crossed the little lawn and sat down in the sun. I felt light. I was responsible to no one. I had no need to mumble excuses or lies. I would become someone else and my metamorphosis would be so complete that no one I had met over the past 15 years would be able to recognize me. Modiano's Out of the Dark reads like a Camus novel inspired by a Truffaut film. Totally cliche, I know, but that's about the best way I can describe it. It's very, very similar to The Stranger and The 400 Blows. Yeah, maybe it's more of a, a Camus novel inspired by a Bresson film, but it has just slightly more humor than Bresson, whom I think of as being completely humorless for the most part. I don't like Bresson, by the way. I thought O Hazard Balthazar was a miserably dull film. I mean, and I'm a guy who likes Stalker by Tarkovsky. I think he's one of the few artists I can think of who I just feel takes himself way too damn seriously. This was an impression from when I was younger though. You know, maybe I should revisit Bresson. Whatever, shoot me. If you read about Modiano, you'll quickly discover the theme of being haunted by the past, or at the very least heavily preoccupied with it. It makes me wonder if an obsessive preoccupation with the past is a betrayal of the present. The ending is fantastic and paints the portrait of loneliness and aging at the end of a lifetime, outlining the truth that people never really forget the ones they've truly loved, even if they've lost them. So ultimately, it's a sad story because it's about loss and the, you know, and getting older and losing people and for no good reason, at least for no reason that's discernible or more important than any other. Sometimes people just disappear and drift, you know? It's just kind of quietly tragic, but better than food, no doubt. So you should read it. If you like Camus and Peter Hanka and French New Wave cinema, I really don't think you can go wrong. So yeah, check it out. Okay, time for the coffee lottery. For those of you who are new, the coffee lottery is where I take all the names of the patrons on Patreon who have donated $5 or more per video to the show. I place their names in this mason jar here and I pull out a name for every review. And whoever's name I pull out is sent a hard copy of the book plus a bag of coffee roasted by yours truly. And the coffee is delicious. And if you would like to get in on that, you can click on the link in the description box below or go to patreon.com forward slash books are better than food and donate once again $5 or more per video. And $1 or more per video will get you access to the patron only reviews plus the Discord channel that I recently launched. Tons of book conversation and recommendations on there and also access to the the Better Than Friday post, which is just a list of five things that I'm interested in at any given time. It could be books in the pipeline or films or uh, articles or music. It changes weekly, but uh, I'm having a lot of fun with that. And if you think we have similar taste, I think you'll get a lot of value out of that. Thank you very much to all the patrons. Best of luck. All right, here we go. Katie. Thanks a bunch, Katie. Really appreciate the support. You will be receiving Patrick Modiano's Out of the Dark, plus some delicious coffee. Thanks. And you're going to be the first patron to receive ooh, coffee roasted from this giant fucking bag of green coffee from Brazil. And it's gonna be delicious, I'm sure. So please subscribe if you have not already. Please hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this. I appreciate it. It helps the algorithm do things and see my stuff in theory. Who knows? Thank you very much for watching and please always remember to bring a book wherever you go. You never know when you'll have five or 10 minutes, then all of a sudden you'll find you're finishing more books and life just might be a little bit better. Great to see you as always. Take care of yourselves, have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.